Hello everyone. In this video, I would like like to start a Verilog course, uh, which can be used for beginners too. I am going to teach every concept in detail. Uh, the course is unique that you you will not only listen to the things but you will uh, practice it. At the end, I had provided a quiz and a lab too, uh, so you can learn learn it uh, doing practically. You can practice it. So let's start the course. Firstly, what is an HDL? What is a hardware description language? It is just like another or all other programming languages, but it has special constructs like hardware kind, concurrency and timing. What is concurrency? Concurrency is nothing but the statements are executed concurrently rather than sequentially. So this this. Uh, this construct is not available in programming languages like C and C++. So, this is a bit, uh, benefit in hardware de description languages. This concurrency is uh, a, a necessary element in the digital circuits. So, we have uh, we are learning another language called hardware description language for designing this digital circuits. And a timing construct is also not available in programming languages, but available in this hardware description languages. It can deal with a different abstraction level such as behavioral and structural level. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll discuss about these things later in the upcoming slides. And it supports a timing such as propagation, delay, setup time, and hold time. We can, uh, we can mention all these in the um, all these by using the hardware description language so uh, we are uh, we are going into the uh, main topic what is Verilog HDL and why is it used it is used for design verification and implementation of digital circuits uh, it is good to know uh, who had developed it uh, so it is developed by Phil Morby and Prabhu Goyal at Automated Integrated design systems it is a similar to c programming language with added constraints just as said so firstly uh, the main building block of a design is its design module so uh, a design module consists of variables ports and instantiations uh, so these are the variables inputs these are the uh, i have uh, we can see the instantiations later. Hum. This module starts with the keyword module. The uh, the keywords are represented in italic font. You can see here. Uh, it starts with the keyword module, followed by the unique module name. Like if you are designing a half header, you can give the name as uh, module name as half header. Like your wish uh, by unique module name and then followed by the port declarations and the at last it is ended with the keyword and module here uh, so uh, if we consider the example how far the design here uh, we, we are considering the inputs as a and b outputs as sum and carry here there are two types of uh, ways uh, to to denote the inputs and outputs we can directly give the um, inputs names here and we later mention them as inputs and outputs this is one of the way and another way is directly mentioning them as inputs and outputs you can see here in the first way we first mention the names and later we are mentioning as inputs and outputs and the and in the here you can see that you are uh, directly mentioning them as inputs and outputs we can use both uh, both the ways but not both simultaneously you should not club both of the, uh, both of them like mentioning here input a comma b output some carry and again mentioning them as inputs and outputs you should not club those two this is uh, nothing but different versions this is the new version and this is the old version in this way we can de design uh, define a module these are the statements uh, in the statements in the design like we are assigning sum is equals to a or a or b 
xor b and carry is equals to an2 uh, we know the types of modeling there are uh, two types of modeling we are discussing here one is behavioral modeling and one is structural modeling in behavioral modeling uh, we will we'll, uh, use the statements in terms of equations or in the terms of truth tables and in uh, structural modeling we are instantiating the sub blocks uh, which are already coded and we are connecting them instantiation uh, so we are going to structural modeling and we are learning the instantiation here so what is instantiation instantiation is, is nothing but uh, taking the uh, taking the uh, instances which are already coded for example we are, we are thinking to design a full adder uh, we, uh, we know that full adder can be uh, designed from two half adders and we, we had already coded half adder design here so we can use this half adder design and create a full adder so we are instantiating like we are calling the uh, calling the two half adders into our design it is just um, so when we call it is just creating a place uh, in our design an instance in our design so uh, we are using this half adder code and half adder instances and creating a full adder now here we are using an or gate also as you know uh, the how to create a full adder from two half adders this is the connections we are giving uh, so we, uh, we can do the instantiation in two types after instantiating we have to just connect them so this connection can be given uh, two types one is name and port connection and second one is ordered port connection first we'll discuss about name and port connection name and port connection is uh, so first I'll, I'll, I'll discuss syntax here uh, just like we, uh, the module is the keyword the ladder is the uh, name unique name you are giving to the module and here a b c in c in or the inputs s and c out or the outputs here um, s1 c1 c c2 or the internal signals which came in between so we are instantiating instantiating the half adder modules here uh, we give the uh, uh, module name which we have used here we have used a half adder as the module name right we give that name and some instance name uh, which, which can be unique instance name and here in name and port connection we give the names of the uh, signals which, which is present in the module and which uh, in the signal name which is in the instance so dot a is the signal name of the instance and this a inside the bracket is the uh, signal name of the module so uh, like uh, like this we are connecting dot a of the a signal of the instance is connected to the a signal of the module b signal of the instance is connected to the b signal of the module some signal of the instance is connected to the s1 signal of module carry signal of the instance is connected to the c1 signal of the module like this we are connecting the signals this is name and port convection, convention connection uh, whereas ordered port convention is like uh, we'll just give the signals in the same order like uh, here half adder we have given a b sum carry right so in the same order we'll give a b s1 c1 like such that a is connected to the a b is connected to the b s1 is connected to sum c1 is connected to the carry like that this is the ordered port connection you can check one more uh, one, once more so that you can understand better what are the rules for identifiers first what are the identifiers identifiers are the names which we provide for the very log objects and instances so consider here this is the inst1 inst this is the identifier we are giving a name for the instance right so these are the identifiers so uh, what are the rules for the identifiers 
first thing is that it should start with a letter or an underscore it should not start with the numbers or any other symbols it should start with either an underscore or a letter there is no restriction on length and we uh, and we can use numbers letters underscores and dollar symbol in the uh, later letters like not in the first letter but in the later letters we can use numbers and uh, dollar symbol we could we should not use other symbols in the later letters also and it should be case sensitive it is case sensitive like uh, the capital a b c identifier is different and small a b c identifier is different so you should be specific while mentioning the uh, identifier and if you should not it is not a good pro practice to use both like capital a b c and small a b c in the same design uh, like because it is difficult to use we will be confused right so uh, it's not a good practice comments and white spaces so it is uh, the comments are used for the better readability uh, so, so if a reader uh, for the reader to understand what is happening in the code comments are used uh, these comments are represented using a double slash uh, or this slash at an asterisk single line comments are used uh, single line uh, line comments are represented using double slash and block comments like block comments means the comments with with, uh, with more than one line like two and three lines with, uh, if there are big comments uh, we will mention like slash and star it starts with slash and star and end with star and slash and uh, it is not a good practice to use comments in between rtl code so for example we are we are uh, thinking to give input a comma b and you you want to mention the k and b here are considered as inputs but it is not good practice to mention the uh, that comment in between the code so it it will be not good to read so you can mention the comments at the end of the statement or uh, and you need not give the unnecessary comments which can be understand by the reader you, you, you can understand here input uh, inputs are a and b you need not again give the a and b or considered as inputs so better avoid the unnecessary comments and we can use white spaces for readability like here uh, uh, in for indentation like here we, uh, we are using an always block uh, i'll i'll discuss about this always and pro, uh, and initial blocks like procedural blocks later you just see here uh, about indentation so uh, if if all the start of all the statements start in a in a line uh, it, it will not be good to read so if if uh, indentation is maintained it will be good to read so we we we'll, we have maintained two spaces here before if so we are uh, saying that in always block if statement is there in if in if if statement there are some statements so it, it will be good to read so uh, white state uh, so white space are used for such cases and this is the end of this uh, video there is a quiz so you can answer uh, you can answer this quiz by your own and uh, i'll i'll mention the answers in the comments you can compare the answers of yours with the answers i had mentioned uh, better you try first and then later check so first question is what are the basic building blo uh, building building blocks in a design what are the two types of connections given in instantiation uh, you just write some legal identifiers which are legal and the lab is that try to write rtl coding using verilog uh, and using instantiation that is using structural model so first what you do is first write a um, as these are primitive gates just like i had written or or um, or gate here what is this yeah i had instantiated instantiated or gate here right or gate and gate these are the basic gates so just like this you instantiate the gates mentioned there like uh, nand gate not gate and gate instantiate all these gates just like i did here and uh, 
write the coding parallel coding use structural modeling and uh, and write the parallel coding using both connections like named port connection on ordered port connection so try this and um, check uh, check the answers in the comments all the best